Hey guys, and welcome to the last lab of the semester. Great job for making it all the way through. This week we're doing experiment 15, which is on colligative properties. Let's, Let's do our, our last safety check. check. I hope you've got on your long pants and closed-toed shoes. And as always, don't forget your snazzy lab coat. Gloves are mandatory today, so make sure you have on your gloves. And last but not least, don't forget your safety goggles or glasses. This lab is all about the properties that change when you compare a pure solvent to its solution. Now, a solution here is just a mixture of the solvent with its solute. Thus, we're just comparing a pure solvent and a mixture. Not surprisingly, the solution will have different properties as compared to the pure solvent. What is surprising, though, is that since the mixture is mostly solvent, the change in properties does not depend on what the solute is. Instead, the change only depends on the amount of solute. These are known as colligative properties, and today you'll observe firsthand how the freezing point changes between a pure solvent and its solution. Thus, you'll get to experiment and determine freezing points, and you'll get to practice using molality as a concentration. Molality, not molarity, is defined as the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, and it is the primary unit of concentration for colligative properties. The punchline for the day is to determine the identity of an unknown, but there are a lot of things you'll have to do before you get there. First, you'll need to determine the change in freezing point between pure lauric acid and a solution of lauric acid with your unknown solute. This is really easy. Just heat each sample so that it melts, then monitor its temp as it cools and freezes. And after graphing your data, you'll be able to determine your relevant freezing points. You'll then be able to calculate the molecular weight of your unknown using this change in freezing points. And finally, you can then use a molecular weight to figure out the identity of your unknown. Start the experiment by filling your 250 milliliter beaker about three-fourths of the way full with water and then gently heat it on your hot plate. We do not want this water to boil, so be sure to keep it between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. Next, you'll need to set up your melting slash freezing point apparatus. First, get a clamp and attach your test tube to a burette stand or bench pole. Next, fit the wire stirrer through the smaller hole in your rubber stopper and then fit the thermometer around the remaining hole. After fitting your rubber stopper to the top of your test tube, make sure the thermometer and wire stirrer are not touching the bottom of the tube. Then your apparatus is good to go. Our pure solvent today is lauric acid, which is especially useful because it freezes at around 44 degrees Celsius, or about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that we won't need any ice to freeze the solvent. Instead, we'll actually heat up the lauric acid solid, causing it to melt and become our liquid solvent. And then we'll simply let it cool in air and monitor its temp as it freezes. First, you need to obtain an initial weight of your melting point apparatus. You can keep it upright by use of a teared beaker on the scale. Now just add about 5 grams of lauric acid to your apparatus and get a final weight. Again, just keep the apparatus upright on the scale by use of the beaker. You're now ready to melt your solid lauric acid so that it can become the liquid solvent. Place your apparatus in the hot water, making sure the test tube does not touch the bottom of the beaker. Leave your apparatus in hot water until the temperature of the lauric acid reaches about 50 degrees Celsius. At this point, all of your lauric acid should have melted, meaning it is now our liquid solvent. Time to watch the lauric acid freeze. To enable cooling, simply raise your apparatus above the hot water and then carefully remove the hot plate from underneath. As your lauric acid cools, watch the temperature on the thermometer closely. Once it reaches 50 degrees Celsius, write down the temperature and then stir the sample with the stirrer or thermometer and record the temperature again every 30 seconds. After about five minutes, prepare a cool water bath by quickly filling another beaker with tap water. Then lower your apparatus into this water and continue to record the temperature every 30 seconds for another 3 minutes. This totals 8 minutes of temperature data. After graphing your temperature data, you can determine the freezing point of the pure lauric acid solvent. Alright, we're now ready to see how this freezing point changes for a solution which is defined as a mixture of the solvent with its dissolved solute. You'll add an unknown solute to your lauric acid to make the solution and then you'll simply determine your new freezing point by the same procedure. Just heat it up and let it cool. You'll need an accurate weight of your unknown, so be sure to dry off the bottom of your apparatus before continuing. Now you'll simply add your unknown directly to your lauric acid. This is best done while raising the top of your apparatus up with one hand, and then adding the unknown directly to the test tube with your other hand. After tearing the scale with your upright apparatus containing lauric acid, add some unknown, and then check the new mass. 
just take your time and after you've added about 0.5 grams of unknown, you're good to go. Now just as before, melt the entire sample by heating it in hot water. And just like before, watch the temp closely. Once it reaches above 50 degrees Celsius, your sample should be completely melted and should now be a solution. You are ready to cool your solution and watch it freeze just like you did with the lauric acid. Just raise your apparatus up and carefully remove the hot plate. And just like before, once the temp of the solution reaches 50 degrees, write down the temp, stir the solution, and then write down the temp again every 30 seconds. After about 5 minutes, obtain a cool water bath. Then place your apparatus in the water and continue to take the temp every 30 seconds for another 3 minutes. After collecting all of your time temperature data, you're now ready to graph it. Make sure to appropriately plot and label your data and axis and title your graph. Then you're ready to find the freezing point of your solution. First, use a ruler to draw a straight line with your initial cooling data on the graph. Then draw a straight line using the downward sloping line of your final point. Finally, determine where these lines cross, and then draw another straight line from this point back to the y-axis. This temperature is the freezing point of your solution. Again, don't forget to label this important temperature. This time, it's TF solution. On this graph, you should also label delta T, which is just the difference between your two freezing points. And it's from this delta T that you can figure out the identity of your unknown. All it takes is some serious calculations. Colligative properties are the coolest! Woo!